Welcome back to Cafe Latte Chat. Today we are talking about landslides and slopes and um, how far we've come since uh, the tragedy of Highland Towers 20 years ago. So we were discussing um, what what steps can we take, you know, as a country, as you know, a people to improve our system right now. Uh, Dr. B, your thoughts? Okay, yeah. Well, ideally, we, we currently we have the OEC. So OEC is um, uh, the experts uh, inputs are very ad hoc. So this is where the area we need to improve, to beef up. But that may not be easy as well because you've got so many states. The other alternative is that we have a central agency. You need organizations, you need budget. So if we can get that done, that will help the uh, OAC in the, in the states. That would be the best options. That's as far as you have uh, organizations, you have a budget, so they can beef up the staff to assist the OAC. And the other one, of course, uh, the guideline, although we haven't practiced, I think that we can actually refine the guidelines. And the, the other things that we s I mentioned before is the uh, old slopes. We need to put some effort, put investment into the old slopes to make sure that the old slopes are not going to give us trouble. With time. Mm -hmm. it, uh, understanding from old slopes, right, yeah. actually, I understand. Is it actually, in terms of pricey, is it actually pricey to, to fix old slopes? Well, so some of them may be pricey, we don't know. So the first thing is that you have to talk about the uh, risk. Of course, you have to concentrate on the risky area or risk, a uh, high risk slope. Mm. But before you can determine the risk, you talk about hazard, whether there's any potential of the land slip. If there's a potential, is it going to cost life or cause damage to property? If yes, then that is a category you want to pay more attention to. So until you have done that, you would not know whether you need a lot of money to spend or not. So this is where you need the, uh, what do you call, the setup, the organizations, and dedicated for that purpose. Of course, with the budget. Without <laughs> budget, you can't do anything. Yeah, so everything's money. Um, in Zafrul, um, you were telling us a very interesting idea just earlier about uh, your, your idea of how actually we can improve. Uh, perhaps you'd like to share a bit about okay um, when we talk about slope safety each of construction industry players have to aware about this and play their roles so uh, when we talk um, uh, about safety okay so when we talk about uh, safety uh, on the s that slope so it involves so many uh, segment let's say the supplier they have they ha they can play their own role to provide quality products for the slope stabilization works and then the contractors the contractors can play their role they have to follow the design by the consultant and the consultant also can do the design data collection properly uh, which is sufficient to carry out their stabilization design works this is very important as well as the supervision on site they have to make sure that their design is according to what they have designed before mm -hmm. rather than they pass to the Indo Indonesian workers or other mm -hmm. uncompetent uh, construction workers, their workers to carry out the slope stabilization works. Stabilization works. So as well as the uh, agencies, they have to play their own role, uh, scrutinize all the drawings, make sure that the buffer is uh, sufficient, the proposed retaining wall is um, sufficient to maintain uh, the slope. This this is very important uh, for for the um, uh, slope to be there uh, safe and sound for uh, ho for whole life. We can say that. So this is uh, quite important. Um, um, I think that that's all we we can say mm -hmm. about mm -hmm. that. Um, you mentioned just now that uh, I understand that MPJ is one of the few local councils where she set up a specialized slope unit and all this kind yeah. of thing. Also, um, do you in other councils they are not that lucky? <laughs> I gonna assume they don't have resources and all this kind of thing. So, um, do you think that you know we could do something about this and you know provide more um, expertise to the people somehow? Is there any way of doing it? Mm. Oh yeah, sure. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Okay, we do realize that uh, for local council, like for example, Apanjaya, even Penang, BKL, they have their own uh, it's called slope unit. Uh, it is understandable <coughs> because they also have a lot of hillside developments in their areas. 
But there's no doubt that some of these PBTs or the local government, probably they don't have much slope or hillside developments. Mm -hmm. So it's, they're sharing, it's more like sharing of the stuff, you know, they do engineering, they do hillside, they do road drainage and all that. So uh, that's where the, that's the beauty of the OAC system I mentioned just now. For new developments, we have other agencies who can be part of the OAC and contribute to them in giving advice to the local government and also to give comments on the hillside development and all that. On the ministry part also, every year we, we without fail, we always have courses where we invite all the local government uh, staff, basically the technical staff to come in. We give courses, we invite, uh, for example, JKR, even the private consultants, JMB to actually give talk on the hillside development, hillside management, even uh, risk management and disaster management. This is to help the, the local government to actually handle any situation that might come along. So, okay, that's another one. Another thing is though, uh, from year to year also, we did have some allocation we actually give to some of the local government to help them to maintain their own slope. You know. So with that allocation, they can actually do some maintenance of the slope. That means that they can also depend on the federal ministry to actually assist them. So I suppose uh, having done that for quite some time, it does help the local mm -hmm. government to actually manage the slope issues and all that. So and our or the another thing that I might add also, our ministry also from time to time did go out on the ground to actually help the local government to audit some of the slopes and give some advice to them. So this is what the ministry is committed to doing year in, year out. So I think we'll keep on doing this to, to help our local government in order to make sure that our cities are more safe uh, for everybody. Mm. Okay, Eric, perhaps you'd like to see what yeah. you'd like to see. Okay. Uh, Let's see here. All right. Um, first of all, um, I was just recently going through the guidelines, you know, but like as everyone's saying, three states have their own state guidelines, which is Penang, uh, Wilaya, the federal territories, and uh, uh, Wilaya and um, Slangor. And I really, when I was going through the documents, I really liked the fact that, okay, you have this thing, which is the one-stop center, which is a process for processing development orders by the developer okay and um, and then so it goes through this process but it also has started inserting these um, these checks which are technical checks on slopes and that is just dedicated to looking at whether if it's on hillside development whether that slope is whether the development is um, uh, you know appropriate for that slope and um, what you know, construction methods will be used and all that kind of stuff. And it's kind of like inserted at these stages during the check. And so even though you have this documents called guidelines and everyone says, oh, guidelines are not enforceable. Um, it's, you know, it's just sort of, it sort of has this insinuation that it's uh, optional, but actually by inserting it, building it into the approval process, it's really it's great. Yeah. These, these guidelines actually sort of, you have to follow it, otherwise mm. you don't get your development order approved. And I really like that idea. And I just wish that more states would adopt that because we have three states that have done it, but you know, there are slopes in other states and it would be great if they can, mm. um, you know, s start coming up with their own slope guidelines as well. And it's not like you have to build it up from scratch because, um, you know, the, the local housing yeah. Um, they already have that that the, those guidelines, so you just use that as a base, yes. and you customize it according to the development uh, plans of your, yes. your of your state. Mm -hmm. It's it's fairly doable, so it would be great if that could be done. That and the second thing is that um, when we talk to the local authorities, they say there are three things that constrain them, which is funding. Um, uh, resources, mm. um, human resources, although NJ Reza addressed the issue that, you know, there are adequate resources, um, and expertise. I mean, traditionally local authorities are not trained to become geotech engineers, <laughs> and that sort of hasn't been in their area of scope of works, but mm. because slopes, um, now with hillside development, slopes are becoming assets that are handed over to them after development. So they become responsible for these assets for which they are not necessarily trained for. So um, again, it would be great if there was more support given to these local authorities, because I'm sure they're trying the best they can, but because of the, the fact that you know they're lacking in, in, in all of these three things, that it's very difficult for them to do. And then um, one last thing is that there should also be um, enactments or 
legal standing for local authorities to carry out their work. For example, when we call MPAJ and we said, okay, there's a problem on this slope and, um, and it belongs to them, it belongs to um, local authority, then they'll come right away and they'll fix it and there's no problem. But as soon as it becomes a third party matter, like the slope belongs to this guy and he's not even living there, he's living somewhere else and he's sort of a third party owner and um, MPAJ has tried repeatedly to contact this person and there's notices given and he still ignores it, there has to be something in their enactment that says MPAJ or any local authority for that matter has the right to go in and say, look, we're gonna take you to court if you don't fix this because if your slope fails, it's gonna harm not only your own property, but it's gonna harm others around you. So there sort of has to be a little bit more bite, maybe perhaps to their author, you know, to their authority. Mm. All right, um, and uh, I think that wraps up our session of uh, this Cafe Latte Chat on Chung Thank you very much for watching.